two years ago. I was doing a workshop at UCT, University of Cape Town. You know, you see people for the first time, so you, you don't know who is a beginner, who is a, already an a accomplished musician. And as I said, I realized pretty quick that Skalk is one of the guys in the workshop who actually was, I mean, he didn't learn anything that day because he, he knows everything about bass already. But So it was a very nice conversation and, and um, very nice uh, bonding there. And we had a chance to talk and he told me about himself, he's a bass player and I mean he's a very nice accessible guy and we, we just started talking and he told me about the project he's involved and then I realized pretty quick that he's like a serious professional musician who was interested in working together. and I'm a bass player from South Africa, also a composer and arranger and uh, I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Music was part of uh, the way we grew up um, but I only seriously pursued music as a later on in life. I started playing in bands soon after I left school while I was still a teenager and then it very quickly became obvious that this is what I wanted to do. Um, and then for a period I worked very hard at it um, and I was very lucky to start playing with some popular artists in South Africa from a very young age. I, I became friends with Martin Zenker, who's involved with the uh, Gute Music Lab. Um, Martin's also involved in Munich University, and uh, he was doing a workshop in Cape Town. I went to his workshop, and I think I said he must come see the band of mine playing. And we became friends very quickly. And soon after that, uh, I was playing a world music festival in, in uh, Würzburg, in Germany. And we stayed in touch and he said, why don't you come over to Munich and uh, come give a master class on African music. I ended up going to Munich for a few days and taught some of the students there and, and it strengthened our, 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 um, yeah, our bond got stronger. And then last year we invited Martin um, and Professor Klaus Reichstaller from the Munich uh, College of University of Music to Cape Town. And they did a series of workshops. and. They brought uh, Angie in Gembeyar and she uh, even taught the people uh, the tradition of long song and gave some workshops and that. And we had some beautiful collaborations with South African musicians, Mongolian musicians and German musicians. So then Martin spoke to me earlier in the year and said, how about coming over to Ulaanbaatar and see if we can run a South African week, an African week. And, and here we are. Bring it now.
guys back and we go back into um, um, uh, C. C. Okay. We're going to play some of the parts that we're doing in the head. So we just have like a bit more whip. You know, so can, can we refer to those parts that we have at, um, uh, at in C and D? So don't we play this, don't play this, the whole melody, but like, for instance, in bar 17. I'd like to have that part. The wonderful players, uh, there's some stuff that's new to them. I think some of the rhythms and the timings, they're feeling it out, but uh, it makes me smile. So, <laughs> we're getting there. The majority of the material is my music, but then we're also playing a selection of, of music that I chose from some of my favorites. Um, I think my main concern was going to be was going to be from the rhythm section, you know, not so much the horns. The rhythm section has to has to have that energy and that feel, and have to understand the, uh, the type of grooves that we are doing. And there, I was pleasantly surprised. You know? It's not all a hundred percent you know, like how we do it in Africa. So it gives the impression, you know, and it's, it's, it's enough for us to sound like an African band. <laughs> I think it's nothing they, they have heard or played before. It's a completely different approach, a completely different language. A lot of aspects in this music. It's joyful, happy music, and at the same time it's, it's complex enough that, that you need to study it, you need to learn it and Skog's an expert in that. He sent the charts and he actually wrote a lot of his music or arranged a lot of his music especially for this occasion for the, the, the instruments that we had. Honestly I think some of the musicians here underestimated the complexity of the music and I blame it partly on me. I should have been a little more pushing them to, to get the charts together but in the end it all worked out great. So that was very primitive music um, from the Khoisan. So you can imagine when um, European people arrived 
they had at that stage you know very sof- very advanced music you know o- orchestras Classic. and classical music it's as a musician he's uh, incredibly knowledgeable about that that history of, of African music rhythm concepts and all that you know uh, I really benefit from somebody who, who knows in detail what this music is about I'm very impressed by the by his level of understanding that that music so it's, it's, it's music is very integrated in in the way we live as well it becomes part of how we live in we can apply the same disciplines on our own lives and and the same with so so that's what would be important in practicing for me is there's a there's a purpose behind it and there's some fun behind it and it's a it's a I'm, I'm, I wouldn't want to just practice because it's something I have to do. That would be like I don't even want to highlight anybody because they they're all brilliant musicians, and and they've all become good friends over the last five days. You know, I really enjoy their company. Um, they seem to be enjoying mine, and uh, I think for the first time, as far as I understand, we made the people dance and jump on the tables. You know, so that that counts for something. It means we ha- they're having a good time and we're having a good time. I really hope that we get a chance to work together again in the near future. You know how to sit down there, eh? Well, um, Hongo is a remarkable guy. Uh, and with the establishment that he's created, the Fat Cat Jazz Club in Lombardia, um he's provided like really fertile soil for jazz to develop. What I love about this place is it seems to be like the hangout place for all the young guys. You know, they come and they hang out, they play every night, they play in various uh, combinations. And when they're not playing, they're coming and they're watching music, you know. And they have the opportunity to grow together. The best way to grow in music is to have the opportunity to play with other people. Um, for me, it's one of the greatest jazz clubs I've ever seen in the whole world, including places in New York and England. You know? <laughs> Martin Zenker is a um, he's a remarkable man in the sense that um, he gets things done and he has a lot of passion for uh, developing the youth and he's got a lot of passion for developing jazz. He's really knowledgeable and, and he's great at working with, with the kids. So yeah, I mean I have to sing his praises and it's, it's, uh, I really admire what he's doing and I see a long uh, future ahead for us working together in back and forth exchanges. And, um, you know, coming up with creative ideas and sharing knowledge. And that's that's really what it's about for him. You know, he just he also wants music and especially jazz to thrive. I'm looking forward to doing it again. And and um, my dream and, and I know Skalk's dream is to really establish a, a regular and ongoing connection between these three cities, Munich, 
Cape Town and uh, one month. So, wish us luck, and I'm sure we this won't be the last time that uh, he was over here.